Hey guys, hope you had a good Easter break. Um, so this is our discussion for Stone Butch Blues and my part is mainly gonna be about gender and sexuality and the relationship they have together and basically how Jess views gender and sexuality throughout the book. And I'm gonna focus on like how her view of it changes throughout the book based on who she meets and her interactions with people and the different relationships she has throughout the book. And we're gonna do our discussion, mainly how the other group did it. So if you have any questions, any other comments, anything else to say basically about this video and what I have to say about gender and sexuality, just write it down, make a mental note. We're gonna talk about it in class and then we're gonna do a forum after like the other group did too. So first I wanna start off talking about when Jess and Frankie see each other after a while because Frankie has started to work at the same place as Jess. Um, so they get in touch again and they're talking and right before Frankie's about to leave, she says that, oh yeah, I have a girlfriend. We've been dating for a year and you know her. And then she says that this girlfriend's name is Johnny. And this is when Jess is kind of skeptical and saying that the only Johnny I know is a butch and since you're a butch too, you can't be with Johnny. Because basically Jess, up until this point, thinks that two butches can't be together because it doesn't work with society's roles and how these roles have like, are implanted in their brains to make them think that they need a male and a female in a relationship and that's why Throughout the book, Jess really goes for female lesbians because she believes that she needs to be a dominant in the relationship because she dresses as a man, she acts like a man. Basically because she's a butch, she needs to hold the male role in a relationship. And that's why she thinks that two butches can't be together. So when she finds out that Frankie is with another butch, she's like, angry about it and doesn't really understand and kind of like shuns off Frankie because of this and never really talks to her again. So the part I'm talking about is on page 219 and it says, so it goes, my mouth is open. I shut my head from side to side. Honest Frankie, I don't get it. I don't understand. Frankie Smolded, you don't have to understand it, Jess, but you got to accept it. If you can't, then just keep walking. That's exactly what I did. I couldn't deal with it, so I just walked away. I w it wasn't hard to avoid Frankie after all that. We worked on opposite ends of the plant. I hung back in the afternoons. I didn't want to run into either of them at the time clock. The more I thought about the two of them being lovers, the more it upset me. I couldn't stop thinking about them kissing each other. It was like two guys. Well, two gay guys would be all right, but two butches, how could they be attracted to each other? Who is the female in the bed? I found myself obsessing about Frankie and Johnny. I was so deep in thought on Wednesday morning that I noticed Scotty and I were the only guys in the apartment. Scotty mentioned towards the men's room, you gotta go in there, he said. So this is basically showing how like, Jess is so absorbed in this role that is put on her by being a butch that she can't really see like out of this and because of this she's separating Frankie from the rest of the butches and believes she doesn't really belong with them because she's into other butches and you could see even in the passage she says who's the female in the bed so you can see how Jess is like so into this idea of male and female even though she doesn't fit into either of those categories because of the pressures that she that that are put on her and that are put on people like her all throughout this time in history and throughout this time in the book. So I found a similarity between Stefan and the well glorious and Jess in this part of the book basically because of how they are so like stuck in this way of how a relationship is supposed to be that they can't really see any other relationship happening well and this is relates to Stefan because like she grew up looking at her parents relationship and thought that her parents relationship was the perfect relationship exactly how every relationship should be you should have a male who should protect the female and not let any harm come to them and then you should have the female who's like there for the male in the relationship and 
you can really see this happen to her when she's with Collins and she tries to protect her from the housemaid's knee and like just every relationship that goes on in the book with her and that's like Jess because Jess is with all of these female lesbians because she believes that she has to be the male and she has to be the protector she has to be the strong one because of how she dresses because of how she identifies and she believes that there's no other relationship that can happen because of what is around her and what she's seen throughout her life she sees a male and a really and and a female being together in a relationship and that's just basically the only way she views a relationship until she finds out Frankie and Johnny are together and it's so foreign to her that she can't even wrap her mind around it and we're gonna see throughout the book how that changes but at this point in time she really doesn't believe that two butches could be together and it's so she believes it so strongly that she can't even be friends with Frankie anymore so when you look at how Jess saw that Frankie didn't really fit in with this group of society that was trying to move away from being abused and all of this stuff that would happen by just living and being themselves she saw Frankie is not a part of that anymore because she was with two butches and she didn't believe that she really fit with this group but you can see how that changes for Jess when she starts taking the hormones to become a man and she really sees how she doesn't feel part of the cause anymore because she isn't strictly what a butch is supposed to be or what these lesbians are who are fighting for their rights and when in chapter 26 you can see she climbs out of the subway and she sees this rally going on and she sees all these people talking up on the stage and she feels so empowered that she believes that she has to go talk in front of these people and when she goes up there it says my legs could hardly get me on the stage i looked at these hundreds of faces staring at me i'm not a gay man my own amplified voice startled me i'm a butch a he she I don't know if the people who hate our guts call us that anymore, but that single effort shaped my teenage years. Everyone got very quiet as I spoke and I knew they were listening. I knew they, ha I knew they had heard me. I spotted a female woman about my age who stood near the back of the crowd. She nodded as I spoke, as though she recognized me. Her eyes were warm with memories. I know about getting hurt, I said, but I don't have much experience talking about it. And I know about fighting back, but I mostly know how to do it alone. It's a tough fight, because I'm always outnumbered and I usually lose. An older drag queen on the edge of the protest waved her hand back and forth over her head as a silent testimony. I watch protests and rallies from across the street and part of me feels so connected to you all, but I don't know if I'm welcome to join. There's lots of us who are on the outside and we don't want to be. We're getting busted and beaten up. We're dying out here. We need you, but you need us too. I don't know what it would take to really change the world, but couldn't we get together and try to figure it out? Couldn't we be bigger? Isn't there a way we could help fight each other's battles so we don't, we're not always alone? And she says this on the stage and when she's done, she hears so much applause because she's really trying to bring all of these people together to fight this fight so that they can all get rights and when you think about this it kind of puts into perspective how when we talked about like the license how they can't change their gender on the license and all this stuff how it puts these societal ways and like makes them law so it made me think about how the ways that certain people think and like just how she thought in the beginning of the book that Frankie didn't fit in because she liked butches like how these separations within these small minority groups really help like the bigger powers kind of keep them down because they know that if they all come together that the cause will start to work and will flourish and if they can find ways to separate each different group of people within these groups 
they know that the fight for the larger group's cause can never reach its full potential and that's why they do this to separate this large group that can come together and really change the world. So when Jess and Frankie meet again in chapter 24, it's basically because Jess wants to apologize for how she treated Frankie because of how her relationship with Ruth has changed the way she views how gender and sexuality go together. And Frankie goes, I wasn't taking anything away from you, but how do you think I felt when you told me I wasn't a real butch because I slept with other butches? You were taking away who I am. Jesus, Jess, when I walk down the street, guys fuck with me. How don't I have to prove I'm a butch to them? How come I have to prove I'm a butch to you? And when you read this, you kind of see how these groups separated themselves from each other and it hindered how far they could have went to get their rights just because every little different part or different way a butch was or a lesbian was, they separated themselves from the big group that really could have made a change. And then when you keep reading, it goes on to say, am I so different from you? She whispered her thought out loud. You have to decide that. To me, we're all kin. And this is really showing how Frankie believes that they all are meant to be together and they're all meant to work together to reach this goal that they have. And I truly believe that Jess's revelation about Frankie and the fact that she could be a butch and be with other butches really opened up her eyes to her relationship with Ruth and allowed her to have that relationship and be open in that relationship to the extent that she was and it truly allowed her to be happy at the end. So one of the main reasons kind of behind just the society view that is implanted in Jess's head of why two butches can't be together is her own fears of being touched because she doesn't really know how to handle herself in that situation and she even talks about this when she is talking to Ruth on page 295 and she says you want to know the truth Ruth there's a place somewhere inside me where I've never been touched before I'm afraid you'll touch me there and I'm afraid you won't my female lovers knew me well but they never crossed those boundaries inside of me. They tried to coax me across the borders into their arms, but they never came after me. You're right there with me. There's no place for me to hide, and it scares me. Ruth smiled sadly. Isn't it funny? That's exactly why I would like to make love with you. And as they're laying there in this moment, Jess finally voices why she's so afraid to be in a butch-butch relationship because she's basically scared to be touched in a certain way and she's afraid to be touched in this way because all throughout her life she has experienced being the dominant and never really knew what it was like to feel those sensations and basically give herself fully to someone she's never done that before not even with Teresa because their relationship never crossed those boundaries and when she's with Ruth everything changes and it's because they're so similar and that's why she's scared. So my question to you guys was since you see how much she changed and how much her view changed throughout the book basically about the way that she of who she could love and who she was allowed to be with like what do you think was the most impactful part of the book that made Jess's view on how gender and sexuality related to each other change so like what part really like showed Jess that she, she was like okay like I don't need to stick to these standards I don't need to fit what society wants me to fit I can be whoever I want to be